Wow. Hey everybody out in Facebook land. We got a great show tonight. We got two future therapy dogs here, both rescues. We got little Squirt over here. We have our beautiful, of course, uh, Rosie. Rosie, amazing ro zooming Rosie. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about dogs. We're going to talk about why dogs bark and why your dogs are going to be biting people in May. So listen in and watch, listen to the show, Facebook Live. And then during our seven-minute break, as always, we have a seven-minute break. We're going to take Squirt out. And Danielle just got Squirt, what, two days ago? Saturday. Saturday. He's got shipped up from, from Savannah. Arkansas. What? Arkansas. Arkansas. Little Rock. Little Rock. So we're going to see what his story is. Uh, so we got a lot of fun things. If you have any questions, you want to text in questions. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about crate training. A lot of little things. Dog tips on the dog. <laughs> dog tips. Wolves howl. Why our human population is destroying us. We're encroaching on nature. Huh? He doesn't know what that means. What? I already told him. It makes it better. What? He, who does I told you about the movie that just came out, and they, the guy got rid of half the population. Oh. Oh, is that? You're yeah. spoiling it. Yeah, I don't know. That, that was the last that movie. That already happened. I don't know. I don't Two know. I don't know. I haven't watched one movie. <laughs> I did just realize it's live, but yeah, that's Infinity War. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, people are really upset with spoilers. <laughs> What was the question? What was what was? Hit five, four, three. I forget. We're good. Three, Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Dish on Dogs. I'm your host, Mike Gould, uh, Mayor of Houndstown, USA, home to the absolute happiest dogs on earth. I'm joined today by my co-host, the, the very lovely Ashley Pizzo. Hello. Hello. And, of course, our producer, Danielle. Hi. <laughs> is here with us. Close to the mic, Danielle. She's, she's got a new <laughs> rescue dog we're going to talk to. So, assisting Danielle in her producing duties is oh, Ashley's boy. husband, John Pizzo. So he's. Uh, we have a full crew here. We got people, dogs. We're in this little bubble here at uh, Islip Airport, and uh, so yeah, Houndstown USA is home to the happiest dogs on earth. We now have 20 locations in eight states, and we're growing very rapidly. What we are, for those of you who don't know, is a fully interactive doggy daycare. That's what we mean. We take dogs of all shapes, sizes, ages, and we, we, we know their, how to group them together in natural packs so they can, as I like to say, they can hump, jump, and dump all day long without getting yelled at by toxic human beings, i.e. the owners. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, I want to give a shout out to our friends Sean and Paige down in Orlando. They're the newest members of our dysfunctional oh, family, so I'm sure you're excited about that. Oh, yeah. Everybody's excited to get down to Orlando, right? We have our. I have. Sorry, my, Michigan. No, Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> I have my speedo packed. I'm ready to go. Oh, my, my, my suntan lotion, my speedo. Yeah. So, yeah. Sean and Paige, great folks. They're they're really going. They're going to be opening three locations in the Orlando area. Nice. So that's going to be very very exciting. Um, what else? I just give a shout out to my friend Tom Sullivan down in Ocala. He, he listens with his mom down there. He gives me good life advice. He's like a life guru, a life coach. So he's very, very informative. Uh, he knows everything. He's, he's like a guru. So anyway, shout out to him. Uh, shout out to Jackie. I'm hoping she's listening. Jackie Bondanza, <laughs> my lovely, lovely wife. Mm. Mm. I don't know if she's watching. No, no, she said to me, you know what? She, she asked me that day, we're planning a trip. So Jackie, she, she said that we, we were planning a trip. And okay. she says... Could you, let's go someplace I've never been before. You or her? She said that. She said, I want to go someplace I've never okay. been before. You know where I took her? Into the kitchen. <laughs> my oh, my God. God. That's, that's an old joke for you young kids. <laughs> All right, y'all. Yeah, so anyway. No, we're going to London, actually. So we're going to I'm London. There. You like that? You've yeah, been here. You just there. went there. Like two years ago for 10 days. All right, cool. Cool. 
So yeah, so talk about this dog. So you're on your lap, for those of you on Facebook Live, you see this beautiful little dog. Tell us about her. What's her story? What's her claim so to fame? So he's from Arkansas. He, right. Um, his mom was found pregnant um, by some, a woman, and she brought her into her house and basically let the mom have the babies in her house um, just to give her a space because she was uh, she was homeless mm -hmm. um, so she had the babies had a healthy litter and then the woman decided to keep the mom but um, was fostering the the litter until they found home so I found him on pet finder um, through little pink shelter in Connecticut mm -hmm. and they shipped him down from Arkansas just two days ago Saturday yeah, two Saturday. days ago so this was like Match.com. Exactly. Right. I never met him before, right. and then but, I took a chance. But this, as you took a chance, we'll see how long this love affair lasts. But, <laughs> but we're going to watch this, folks. This is the idea. Why we have uh, what Squirt on tonight is watch the development, how you would introduce and make a, a, a dog you've never met before. We don't know her life experiences. Regardless, our little friend over here, Ro Ro Rosie, she has a horrible backstory. We she has no use of her back legs. Supposedly she she was beaten by some kids with sticks and bats. I don't know if it's true. That's the story. I know she's from Armenia because she has a passport and she was flown into the United States. So re here's the point. Regardless of the backstory, we don't really care so much about the backstory. We want to know how they are in the, this moment in time. So we see Rosie. She has no negative psychological effects of anything. She's probably one of the most confident dogs we've ever seen, I've ever seen, with legs. Uh, and we'll take her out during our seven minute break. Squirt is a little on the shy side. Most of the time it's genetics. It's not from the ab necessary abuse or the conditions. We shall see. Sometimes it's related to being weaned off their mother too soon if they're away from their litter before they're eight, nine, ten weeks old. That sometimes has psychological effects. And you know he wasn't abused because... No, yeah, we know his whole backstory. He was born in the foster house. Exactly, foster house, exactly. So. exactly, so we know that. So a lot of times people that rescue dogs, if it's a, you know, they just think if it's, if it's a shy dog or if the dog seems like he's afraid of men or he's afraid of umbrellas, the logical thought he must have been beaten by a man with an umbrella. And that's not true. So dogs are, are very sensitive to their environment. And that's all dogs. And I've met so many people this week with dog issues. You know what happens in May, especially? May, all the dogs that were basically hibernating over the winter, not literally. So a lot of people call me on the words I say. So when I say hibernate, I mean environmentally. Obviously, dogs aren't bears. They don't, their physiology doesn't shut down and they go to sleep for six months or however long. But we as humans, uh, especially up here in the Northeast, not our friends down in Atlanta and Florida, but we kind of environmentally hibernate. And what I mean by that is we, we lock ourselves in. We, it's freezing out, it's cold out, and our dogs that we got last year, let's say you got a puppy last June or July, it's almost a year old now. Right. So now all the human activity, I my phone is ringing off the hook with dog bite cases, uh, meaning the dog got out the front door, and bit somebody, whether it's a kid on a bicycle, a scooter. So dogs are stimulated by sound and movement. It, sound and movement. So if it's barking out the winter at squirrels all winter, and now a kid on a skateboard comes by and the dog gets out the front door, it's tragic. So all these bad behaviors start. Because if you look outside, everybody's out now. The bicycles, it's just nice. It's a nice time. So that as we'll talk about in our, our next segment, We'll talk about you know how the human population has grown so fast, and the dog population. So, and nature. There's no more nature, and it's bad. It's toxic for us humans. We've lost touch with nature. It doesn't really exist anymore. And after the break, after this segment, we take a two-minute break, and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk. So, tell me a little bit. What drew you to this this uh, dog? I just kind of thought he was cute. Oh, <laughs> All right, no, he is uh, cute. He's really cute, and then I read the story online. It said he was really shy, so I know I have a uh, I have two dogs at home, and I know that my one dog Maggie, she isn't too fond of other dogs, so I didn't want to get like a crazy, crazy puppy. So I read that he was kind of on the shy side, so I thought it might be a good fit for her. Because yeah. exactly. there was all the puppies were pretty much still on Pet Finder. Yeah, so there were she had a couple different options and stuff. Oh, like that's that. cool. 
So one of the things I want to talk about, and we'll see how it goes, I know you promised to raise him the Houndstown way, yeah. right? So <laughs> yes, you promised, for sure. You promised <laughs> us this. Like, we, we raised them, and what that means is we socialize them, we love them, but we're not toxic. We don't ask for a lot of stuff from them. And we're going to, my challenges in the next couple of weeks is take our little friend Rosie and our little friend Squirt and make them, whatever the definition of therapy dogs are, whatever you have to do to become a therapy dog, I want to do this with these two mutations. They're mutations. They're mutts. Uh, I, they call her an uh, 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 Aussie, doodle. Aussie doodle, whatever the hell that is. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But, but they're dogs. This is the bottom line. The point of our show is the dog brain is the dog brain. And we can learn so much from our dogs because they, they're not racist. They're not homophobic. They, they don't, they're not jealous, they're not anger. Some of these emotions look like anger and jealousy, but it's really not. They're so pure. They don't care where you were all night. You come home, they'll love you and you'll love them as long as they're safe and secure. When they're not safe and secure, that's when things get out of balance. So we talk about keeping dogs in balance. I mean, look at these two. Now, literally, our friend here, Squirt, this is the first 48 hours that Danielle had her. So let's, I'd like you to follow, follow our journey. Taking a four-month-old dog home, crate training it, crate training it out there on Facebook, and giving a denning animal a den. I'm going to talk a little bit about crate training later on because I get such a pushback as though I'm the meanest man in the world because we teach denning animals. We provide a den to denning animals. And humans just don't get it. It's analogous to water for a fish, a nest for a bird. So I want to talk about crate training after the break. We're going to, after the seven minute break, the next break, we're going to go outside and see how well we can get a squirt to adapt to this weird, crazy world we live in. And we live in a crazy world, folks. It is so bizarre and it's getting worse. Nature is being taken away from us by, ugh, I get crazy. Anyway. Uh, so you're listening to The Dish on Dogs. I'm your host, Mike Gould, Mayor of Houndstown, USA. And then we're going to come back in a little while. We'll talk about the dog brain and how we keep it in balance. Balance. We're always striving for balance in our lives. No excessive anything. Nothing. No uh, obsessive, excessive stuff. And don't project crazy stuff on your poor little dog. Look at these poor little dogs. Leave them alone. <laughs> Leave them alone. Fish on Dog. Join us back in two minutes, folks. Thanks. All right. Rosie, don't worry. Rosie loves me. Um, she's doing very well. So in a little while... Was he sleeping? Yeah. In a little while, we'll, we'll take a, a walk. Let's see. Yeah, so that's what we'll do. We'll make them both ther therapy dogs. Whatever you have yeah. to do to be therapy yeah. She's got a great bite in a fish, and she's not going to bite anybody. Oh, no. Oh, we'll get her around kids, and we'll talk about that after the break. Let's see. You got to talk about the crazy dog contest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because we have some customers. Really? Yeah. Does anybody ever mention it? Nobody even listens. They don't even know what we're talking about. I mentioned it to one of the customers today. All right, but they didn't hear it on our show. But no, I told them to listen to our show. All right. <laughs> listen to the show, Facebook lunatics. And we're going to have the craziest dog contest. You could win a free boot camp. A free boot camp. You send a two minute video, one to two minute video of your dog's most bizarre difficult behaviors with. and we'll uh we'll, we'll we're going to have a contest we just have to sit to look by the dates and we'll yeah it's going to be in the it's going to be after the summer but we're going to take and there'll be all kinds of prizes there'll be private lessons boot camp um it'll be fun fun fun
Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Dish on Dogs. I'm your host, Mike Gould. You're listening to the Dish on Dogs. Uh, it's a show that we discuss hum- uh, dog behavior versus human behavior, human needs versus. Oh, wait, wait, we're getting a bullet in. News, news alert, news alert, breaking news. Dogs bite. Oh, oh there's another <laughs> I was one. Like, wait, breaking wait, news. Breaking news. Just breaking like news. On the headset. Scientists just discovered dogs don't talk English. Okay, all right, good. All right, so that was very. I'm trying to break in with that, that news. Breaking news dogs don't talk and dogs bite. Show everybody. So dogs bite. Why do dogs bite? They have teeth. They don't have thumbs. So let's see. Does your little dog there have canine teeth? Let's see if your assistant producer can figure this out. The anatomy of a dog. She's got the all oh, very dangerous big fangs teeth. So those teeth that you see there are designed for her to kill prey smaller than hers. So a little cute, that's good. I mean, we don't have to give her a dental exam. <laughs> and what about my friend Rosie over there? Does she have canine teeth? Where's Rosie? All right. Does she have canine teeth? Four yes, yes. Hey, now those teeth there, just okay. so you know, nature, mother nature, not me, gave into and rip skin of a, a, an animal, right? So they hunt prey. They're predators. We're predators, believe it or not. You know, so there's a lot of hypocrisy out there, a lot of hypocrisy. We're predators. Uh, we kill things to eat. It, I personally don't like to kill things. I really don't. I don't like to hunt. I don't like to fish. I don't kill anything. But if I, I'd be lying if I don't say I don't like a nice uh, filet mignon, lobster, uh, you know, I just prefer other people kill it and then serve it to me on a plate. And for those of you out there, you know, that, you know, you, you animal rights activists, I'm an adv- animal rights advocate, actually, not an activist, but an a- advocate. And that means I love animals and I want to see them to, I want to see them thrive, thrive, thrive. However, you know, for those of you who have Gucci pocketbooks or nice Italian leather shoes or what are the leather jackets, beautiful leather jackets, what do you think they are? They're from pigs and what else did we say? Cow, mainly cow. Mainly cow. So yeah. poor Elsie the cow, for your <laughs> satisfaction, Elsie the cow was slaughtered, I ate her steak, my, my granddaughter drank her milk. And you out there wore leather, wore leather pocket, a Gucci pocketbook from Elsie the cow. So let's not kid each other about what we do, um, dogs. And these little ones are predators. They kill with those teeth. So check those dogs out. Let me see. Do they have any thumbs? Do they have a pro? Do they have they grown thumbs? No, no thumbs. Okay, so they can't pick anything up. So again, humans have evolved greatly. We stand erect. We have thumbs, and we most important is we have a neocortex the frontal lobe of our brain processes all kinds of emotion and thought and we think everything out dogs are just pure they live in the moment and they are they're smart they're much smarter than we are last week show i talked about dogs don't do stupid things like humans do humans build beautiful homes on the beach they get washed up and then they rebuild them they get washed up so it Dogs just seek high ground. They just, they don't, you know, they, of course they're at risk of being eaten for a, a, from another predator, a hawk, but, right? So that's the way it goes. Dogs eat the cats, the cats eat the mouse, the mouse eats the bugs. What do mouse eat? They, they eat, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess they eat little insects and stuff. Right. Grasshoppers. Yeah, yeah, grasshoppers. So this is the life cycle, whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not. So then when I talk about how we interact with dogs. We allow dogs to be dogs. That's the difference. We don't project human needs, crazy, crazy human needs on dogs. We allow them to come to our facilities. We don't breed discriminate. There's no difference if we, if we look at the brain of a pit bull or a poodle or a pug. They're identical. Uh, the same as humans, right? So if, we do, if you look at a human's brain, you can't tell a religion, a race, uh, a gender, 
I don't think you can. I don't think you can. No. So, so, so you, the bottom line, humans are toxic, dogs are not. We love humans, the ones that come to Houndstown, that's about it. The rest are, you know, <laughs> the rest are, we are, you know this, you know the old saying, the more people we meet, the more we love our dogs. dogs. We yeah. love dogs and animals. Yeah, so it's such a, so, so now we're in a situation that the environmental, you know, the, everything is going down the tubes. But nobody, I don't think, I mean, I, you should. The first thing I think of when I think of the environment, I don't necessarily think of cars, although obviously that contributes to it. But think in, in the last 100 years, 100 years, that's the age of most people's grandparents or great-grandparents. They lived 100 years ago. 1918, the human population in the United States was 103 million people. Today, it's 327 million. More than half, more than double. Or triples. Right. Triple, exactly. The dog population went from 70 million to 900 million. I don't even know the math on that. I'm a high school dropout, but it's a lot of damn dogs. But so, so it's natural that all of, and, and so every time you see a house being built, a building being constructed, some type of wildlife is being displaced. That's the bottom line. And it's sad. It's sad for people that don't understand it. So a couple of years ago, there was a little child, a two-year-old toddler, I think, was eaten by an alligator at Disney World. I don't know if you remember this. Remember of course, they want to kill the alligator. But just think of how crazy this is. Now, naturally, this was horrible. But we've been coached. Disney World was built on a swamp of alligators. And then this little child, unfortunately, you know, and again, I don't blame the parents because you wouldn't expect an alligator to come out of a swamp in Disney World. But the alligator came out of the swamp and ate the child. You can't make a moral decision whether to eat the Jesus. Right. Eat the child. So obviously, right, dogs, uh, right, they can't make moral decisions. They saw a child and they ate it. And it's horrible, but we see it all the time. And people get bit, as I was saying earlier, all, all my phone is ringing off the hook from people that are getting bit by dogs. Because people don't respect the dogs, and you, you have to, and you encroach on their space, that you encroach on their territory. So it's really like an insidious kind of toxic world we live in, and it's not getting any better. And then there's other sociological factors that attribute to dog bites, and we're going to talk about that after the break. If you guys stay with us on Facebook, we got a couple more minutes, but after this break, we're going to take a seven-minute break. We're going to take Rosie, and we're going to take this little uh, flea taxi. What's his name? Squirt, squirt outside. <laughs> and uh, we're going to do some work with him. And then we're going to come back and talk about the sociological effects, because the way we treat our children is the way we treat our dogs, and I think it's going down the wrong road. You know, children have to, excuse me, they have to fall and scrape their knees. They have to get bloody noses. They got to get black eyes in order to, to learn what how to be safe in our world. So we protect our children so much nowadays. We put our children in little bubbles. I, I see it. I'm talking about my own granddaughter. She's like, she's in a, 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 a bubble. You know, parents are very safety oriented and I get it. I just don't know if it's the right thing to worry. You know, we just have so much safety. And as I said, you have to fall off a bicycle and scrape your knees in order to get back on it and r learn to ride it. And, by, and dog behavior and training dogs, by the way, is very similar to that. It's so easy. You know, our turbo training, I say, it's so easy. Most people can't do it. It's so easy because people have so much emotion and they're so physically connected and they project. It's incredible. I've never seen it worse than it is today. People get dogs and they... They anthropomorphize them practically to death. They literally suck the lives out of them by projecting their screaming, their yelling, their squirting water on them. They're, they're, the dogs are on the couch, they're on the bed. Oh, it's frustrating. Barking out the window, the doorbell rings. I know ring. you wanted to touch on that today, too. Why do dogs bark? Right. I want to talk about why do dogs bark. And we will talk about that, the different reasons dogs bark. But... Uh, Let's see how this works with these two little mutts here. We got Zooming Rosie. She's a star celebrity. And maybe, um, what's that celebrity we want to get on the show that we like? That singer? Who, Post, Malone. Post, Post Malone. Post Malone. Is, Post Malone's listening. That's my husband. Post Malone is Danielle's future husband. He doesn't know it yet. But we know he's a big animal advocate. 
So we want to get him to on this show. Anyway, we're going to take a break. Post Facebook crazy people, watch us here. We love you. We love you. We love you. It's just that could also be very toxic. Facebook. So join us. We're going to spend seven minutes, then join us back uh, after that seven minute break. All right, let's get these guys out there. Out there. Your mom just messaged in. She goes, Horace Court is a little bit more. Yeah. Let's put him in there. And he said, John will be able to work that device. Yeah, just unplug the. Um, and you'll follow us around yeah. a little bit. You're just going to do exactly what you were doing. Maybe we'll let. Maybe we'll see. Maybe Ashley will take her. We'll see. Yeah. Him. I mean, Whatever, you guys. Whatever we suggest. That's smart. <laughs> Get her in her thing. Do you have that? No. You got a leash? No. Alright, you go inside, John. Got a nice steady hand there. Alright, well, here we are. We're at Islip Airport. Um, now, airports are very crazy places if you think about it. There's P, I hear music, there's PA systems, there's shadows, there's reflections. So it's really a stressful place for dogs. That's why I'm not a big fan of people having these so called therapy dogs. And there's my little zooming Rosie. And just keep her on the left and follow with your friend there. Relax your left hand. That girl. So this is how it should look. There's Squirt. Keep going. And then, Ashley, you come right. And let Danielle just follow you. Just come this way. Come on, come on, come on, Rose. And just walk, walk, walk. So here you see already our little friend Squirt. There's no tension on the leash. Everybody's relaxed. Zooming Rosie is running around. Make a right. And then go over there, go into the corner. Good. Look at how nice Squirt's in. Keep moving. And then we'll show you how much Squirt. My little Rosie, then you guys stop over there. Stop right there, you stop. So this is wonderful. Look at Danielle and look at Squirt. She's relaxed and believe me, there is a world of distraction here. Now, you want to see true love. Here's, watch my little babies. Uh, what's her name? Rosie. Rosie. Right. <laughs> you want to show why is she called Zooming? Let's see, drop that leaf. Zooming! Yeah, 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 yeah. This is one. She's zooming. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. This is why she's zooming. Come back over here. Uh, hold her for a second. And we'll watch why she's this is a zoomer. Hold her. Watch. And she don't care about... Here, face this way. She's like, you know the racetrack? Let her go. Zooming! Zooming, Rosie! Come on, girlfriend. Come on, girlfriend. Good girl, all right. <laughs> there goes Zumi Rosie, running away at the airport. All right, so the point of the matter is, here you have a dog with the most severe, you want to, when I talk about learn your lessons from dogs, take a picture, take a look at Zumi. She, now she's teaching her to stay by a little correction, slowing her down. Um, then you'll walk with her on your left. So she's a therapy dog. In, in work, she has no, what's more inspirational than her? Look at these two. Now her friend, this might be a match made in heaven. Give her a little correction, a little, good. So when we give a little correction, we just refocus the dog from distraction and potential danger. And that's precisely what its mother would do. So when a subordinate member of the pack, a puppy gets distracted and wanders off, they're at risk of being eaten by a wolf. So we correct their behavior. This is no chain collars, there's no pinch collars, there's no electric, and we're not, on the other hand, we're not, well, the gods, the airport guards. Look, she's perfect. Changes of surface. Yeah, go ahead, you can walk around a little. Ha <laughs> ha! So we expose dogs to crazy things. That's it. And this is how, in 48 hours of her life, look at how wonderful she's doing. Now, if a dog never pulls on a leash, she'll never pull on a leash. So this dog will never be pulling on a leash, nor will she ever be dog aggressive. It's impossible, because we're not going to allow that to happen. These dogs have great, what we call, bite inhibitions, meaning they have a natural tendency not to bite. 
to have a nice. I think we could pass the therapy dog test now, to be honest with you. I got to ask my friend Scott Fresnelia down down in Florida. Hey! Oh, she loves you. All right, come on. Whoa, man. Rosie. Wow. Yeah, go ahead, back in. So we're gonna finish up back inside. This is just an example. I want you to watch Spurt and Rosie's uh, journey through life. Through life, I'm coming, honey. I'm coming. That a boy. Then you can hook that back into your little thing. That was good. You did great. Yeah. Yeah. Surprise. Yeah. Well, that's what you did good. All right. All right, folks. I mean, that, that's it. What is a better... Look at this. Here's your therapy dog. 48 hours. You have an emotional support therapy dog. Hey, Rosie. Hey, Rosie. Hi, Rosie. Oh, hi, Rosie. Good girl. Let's see. Segment two. Welcome back. Segment three we are on. What? Segment three. We're going to talk about any barking dog stuff. I don't know about all state. Let's talk about Maybe kennel that's corp. That's the next show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll split the kennel corp and sports and creation. Introduce a new dog into your home. That's what we're doing here. Uh, we'll uh, talk about our show, our contest. Our crazy dog contest. That was perfect. Your mom just wrote down, we just need Maggie to accept squirt. That's it. <laughs> that's, the, that's the goal. Can I put the audio cord back in? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, sorry. Try to take my job. Okay. Oh, this Jackie's is the... watching. Oh, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. My <laughs> trouble. We love you. <laughs> we love you. Uh... You're supposed to send her kissy faces. Did that happen? I will. Jackie's <laughs> getting kissy faces. I hope it's Jackie. Let's see. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> well, I'm saying I don't want to send it to the wrong person. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Dish on Dogs. I'm your host, Mike Gould. We're live every Monday night at 8 p.m. So how do you can you watch? You can you can watch on Facebook Live. Facebook. You can listen in on Alexa. So if you ask Alexa to put on um, 103.9 on iHeartRadio, it'll bring you to the radio show. Facebook okay. Live. Well, there's a lot of this is radio. why we have a, a, a worldwide audience, right? For, yeah, because of because anyone of could access this with internet. Anybody, sure. if anybody with an internet can listen to this and get get all the dish on dogs, the dish on dogs. We talk about bridging the gap of humans who are becoming more. First of all, as I said before, the human population it's exploding. So nature is gone. I mean, you have to go out on Long Island anyway. I mean, some of our friends down there in Florida and uh, Atlanta and Nashville, they have a little bit more options to go out into nature. But certainly in New York, we're losing it. We're losing nature. As I said, every house. So here's the hypocrisy. So every time you see somebody build a, tw uh, you know, buy a 20-acre piece of property and put, put a mansion on it, they're displacing squirrels, they're displacing deer, they're, they're, and I'm not like one of these lunatics. I obviously, I, I, I get that. But there's, a, again, hypocrisy, hypocrisy. So just look at these wonderful dogs. So those on you on Facebook. So let's talk more about Squirt. So Squirt, Danielle has had literally for 48 hours. He was shipped up here. How did he get here? In a car. He a hitchhiked bus. a bus. He took a bus. <laughs> he had his little backpack on. He came up on a Greyhound bus. 
But let's watch his journey. I challenge folks out there. She didn't pre-test him. You didn't do anything. You I've didn't, never even met him. Never met him. She was attracted to it. There was a connection, a connection online. And that's how we find most of our dogs. How we found Rosie was the same way. We didn't look for a two-legged dog. She came to us. And that sounds a little bit cliche. We don't find dogs. They find us, blah, blah, blah. But it's true. So so Rosie came to us in a wheelchair. We were hiking, Jackie and I, and this dog was on the top of a, in the Hollywood Hills. Like, I was having a heart attack, and the zooming Rosie came <laughs> running up the hill to, resuscit yeah, right, we did. <laughs> to resuscitate her. And we went out to Hollywood, and we brought her back. We didn't rescue her. This is crazy. This is an amazing dog. Is amazing. So it's not rescuing the dogs. Then we go over here to Squirt. For those of you on Facebook, but again, if you're not, trust me, this is a cute. How much does this little thing weigh? Got him weighed today, 17 pounds. So he weighs 17 pounds. He's he, he's so he's this cute little dog. So all dogs are cute, right? So we talk about emotional support dogs, and we talk about therapy dogs, and. So right now, that dog sitting on Danielle's lap is providing her emotional support, and it's therapeutic. So I'm, my biggest problem with therapy dogs in this whole new industry is that it, uh, you don't have to go out and get a special breed of dogs. They're all over the place. We just got these two dogs pretty randomly. Yeah. And if you watch, this dog, Squirt, is never going to pull on a leash. She's never going to become leash aggressive. All I hear all the time, my dog is great at home, but at, when the doorbell rings. So if this, this dog never barks at the doorbell, it's not going to bark at the doorbell. If she, he never begs at the table, he's not going to beg at a table in six months from now. So if you saw our little demonstration, it was nice and relaxed because we're not toxic. We're not projecting. We're not screaming at the dog. We don't have all kinds of contraptions on the dog. We're not shoving food. You know, by shoving food down a dog's throat, it actually weakens your level of authority with dogs. So we use food. We have food right here, and, and Danielle will be given squirt food just because she loves her dog, and they're bonding together. But we're not going to be, we're not going to insult these dogs' intelligence by shoving a piece of tr food down its throat to sit or to stay. It's an absurdity, and I see it all the time because for those folks who call me with training problems and they say my dog knows all its obedience except when the doorbell rings. Well, then doesn't it's know all that it says that's not obedience. Or if it sees another dog. If your dog knows it's obedience, then you'd save yourself 300 bucks and not come to see me because it's fake. It's fake. It's not real. It's, a, it's an illusion because that means at 2, at two o'clock at night in the kitchen when there's absolute quietness, the dog will obviously... When, when these dogs are under pressure or stress, they won't even take food. So, so it's just kind of a, it's a toxic thing. And people just don't understand why their dogs are bark barking, why the dogs are biting. My biggest problem is people just don't take the time. I, I love my clients, right? We love them. They're, they're actually, they, they, money is no object. They pay for the be best medical care, the best organic food. But when it comes, they feel their guilt about the dog for some reason. It doesn't even apply to their own children. They have more guilt about their dog. It's incredible. And I know why. Because we look at dogs and look how they're totally dependent on us. They're never going to grow up and leave the house. So they're with us. They are our hostages. Now, they are our hostages, meaning we have absolute control. They don't have thumbs, so they don't have free will. Every human being listening to this show, every human being in this room has thumbs, opposing thumbs, that means we can open doors and walk out of here because we have free will. Dogs don't have free will and they don't have self-awareness. What does that mean? They don't look in the window and see that they're a, a dog. They just see another creature. So they don't, that we can look at ourselves very often we don't. We look, but we don't really see what we should be seeing. When I look in the mirror, I see Brad Pitt. <laughs> Or post Malone, right? Right. You need glasses. Right. I have my glasses. <laughs> but 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 the point is, so humans, although we're equipped with free will and we're equipped with self awareness, we very rarely look inside of ourselves. So then we get these poor little creatures, and and look at them now. We're a half hour into this, and they're sound asleep. So we have balance in their lives. They're not barking. There's a lot happening here. Yeah. There's people outside. We're literally in a bubble here. 
and there's people walking by with carts and actually dogs, everything. So my little Rosie here is in a wheelchair. She literally has two legs. So whatever her past life experience was, it doesn't matter because right now she's probably one of the most confident dogs I know. And this little one, Squirt, who's probably genetically a little bit on the fearful side, but the way Danielle just handled her, you would never know it. You would think she had the dog for six months. Mm -hmm. So we're going to watch. I challenge people to watch and watch the development of Squirt how it's only going to get better. It's not going to get worse because this is the worst in theory he should be because this is all new. Most dogs come to this airport and they, they haven't been raised properly so they freak out when they hear see doors and so forth. So with that said, let's segue. What are we doing? We're having a contest. World's craziest dog. World's craziest dog contest. So listen to this, folks. You take a one or two minute video, if you think your dog is crazy, and I get videos of crazy dogs. People said the dog's jumping, the people are screaming, they're squirting it with water, they're, it's just, I can't say a shit show, it's a, what do you, well, you just said, oh, sorry. it's a, it's a, what do you call it, a drama, drama, okay, drama, okay. drama, 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 the doorbell rings, here's what happens, it's all quiet on Mockingbird Lane. The dogs are sleeping. It was the night before Christmas. And then all of a sudden, somebody rings the doorbell. And then it is like people are running, jumping, grabbing the dog. Rah, 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 rah. Grab the dog. Don't let him out. Don't move. Just come in. He'll just sniff you. Go sit on the couch. But don't make eye contact. It's craziness, craziness, craziness. And sometimes, a couple of weeks ago, we had Jack and Ethel on. And Jack, this is what happened. There was a lot of drama, and Jack nipped somebody uh, in this dra dramatic interlude where people were restraining the dog. It was just a nightmare, and he nipped somebody. The woman, beautiful, wonderful woman, Ethel, took the dog to the vet. The vet said that he should be put to sleep, right? And that was ludicrous. And if you go back on any of our things, you'll see how wonderful Jack was. It was crazy. He was on the show, right? Or was No, he didn't oh, come in, but she we called have a video. Oh, she yeah. called in, right. So we videoed this. So it's, it's, again, it's in, unintentional. People are nice. They love their dogs, but you're loving the life out of them. You're confusing them. They don't understand what you're saying. They don't understand when you're pointing at them. They don't understand, and they're just in a state of confusion. I always use the example, if you have a deaf child, the only way you can communicate with them is using sign language. You can scream all you want, but they don't hear you, and they don't understand you. And we actually, I think, yeah. we have a dog now in boot camp, his name is Traeger. And I think he's a little hearing impaired. And we might bring him on the show next week yeah. and see. We're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back. We'll talk about our crazy dog contest, because I'm always accused of never finishing a thought. And, <laughs> and I talk too much. How can, You can't understand. This is a talk show. How can I talk too much? <laughs> the problem is I don't finish a thought. That's my friend Tom Sullivan says down there in Alligator Land, Ocala, <laughs> Florida. Okay, we'll talk, join us back in the break. Dish on Dogs. Live Monday nights at 8. 103.9. All right. Let's see if I'm getting any kind of comments. No, I'm saying. Oh, he means on his phone. Yeah, I'm me, so usually I get. <laughs> Many species of rodents. You know, we can talk about that. I'm not going to smoke a cigar. Is John going to be offended by that in the back seat? <laughs> no. All right. Good. He has no choice. Well, yeah. He smells every time I come home on Monday nights. My, my, people, my people were killed by cigars. I'd be very offended. <laughs> that were killed by cigars? Yep. What, like a, a case of cigars? Of a, a, case of, a case of cigars <laughs> fell off a truck? Yep. Mm. <clears throat> Wiped out my ancestors. Your ancestors brought the cigars here. No. <laughs> Alright, we'll go to segment three and four. We'll figure it all out. So you want to talk about Calipoff or no? Well, we definitely want to talk about Cree training, no? Mm. I'll do a little. Was going to hit those four topics. He's, he's unconscious. Unconscious right now. I'm like, he's like putting my arm and legs to sleep. <laughs> oh, he's hungry to do that. 
That was him? <laughs> oh my gosh. You heard the somebody from there. I heard it from over here. Yeah. Look at him, he's so funny. He's gonna we're gonna have to watch you get so attacked this <laughs> That's his stomach. <laughs> see, maybe you yeah, can get a close up. Stomach, I no, I just it, it, once we start again, see if you can get a close up of him <laughs> sleeping like this. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Dish on Dogs. What's the matter? Somebody has some flatulence in here, or is that what, no, what do you like? All right, you're, you're listening to Houndstown Radio. I'm your host, Mike Gould. So here's some stunning examples of why you should bring your dogs to daycare. We have two very young, energetic dogs. Our little friend Squirt over here is out like a light. I think he's snoring. My zooming Rosie over here is sound asleep. So this is why, for those of you who have these management issues where the dog is chewing your house and he's running around, he's jumping on you, he's knocking you down. If you have a nine-month-old dog or a six-month-old or ten-month-old, they're full of energy. They need to interact. At Houndstown USA, home to the happiest dogs on earth, with 20 locations in eight states, you now have the ability for a very reasonable amount of money. How much? 30 bucks or something? Yeah, you come, it depends on what location. Right. Time depends, you come a week, around 30 bucks. 30 bucks. For, you know, guys go out, they play golf, they spend $100, they don't think twice about it. Guys and girls. But, I mean, it's an expensive right. hobby. You go to lunch, you go to McDonald's now, of course, you're 15 bucks. Yeah, exactly. For $30, you drop your dog off at 6.30, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning. It runs around for 10 hours. 10 hours. It's no no BS. We don't nickel and dime people at Houndstown USA. They play. They play. And this is the result of playing. They're, they're both out like they're sleeping now. Of course, it's 9 o'clock at night. They were in daycare all day long. They don't get locked away. Even Zooming Rosie in our wheelchair goes in playgrounds yeah. and daycare. Yeah. And yeah. it's about the same price as doing a dog walker. All these big commercial dog walkers that come down right. there. Well, it's the same it. price. Right. Well, think about it. And, and, and what are they going to do for that? They're going to show up and they're not going to... walk the dog for 20 minutes. And walk the dog for 10 or 15, 20 minutes. Um, yeah, so anyway, Houndstown USA is home to the happiest dogs on earth. We bridge the gap. We understand the human's needs. So we provide a safe and secure environment for dogs to jump, hump, and dump without being, again, this toxic, getting yelled at and squirted with water, throwing bags of, like, what do they throw, cans of paint? Yeah. It's, it's really crazy. We had somebody come in for daycare, their temperament evaluation today, and she went to a different doggy daycare. And um, the dog would come home wet because they use the squirt bottles. Right. And he's a lab, so he enjoyed it. Right. And, um, right. So he, told he gets a report card every time he comes back, right. and it said that he got a little possessive. He didn't like sharing with the other dogs because uh, they give them toys in the room. Right. So then the dog had to be separated. Right. right. So this is insanity. So if you're squirting a golden retriever, which is a water dog, or even a poodle or a Labrador, they're 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 water dogs. So the dog jumps. Some crazy person squirts him with water, and you're praising the dog for jumping. So the point is, without going into all this behavioral stuff, we know how to bridge the gap. We set up all of our facilities are designed for dogs first. The, the customers are always right at Houndstown, but our customers are the dogs, not the humans. We do temperament evaluation, and it's more for the human than it is for the dog. And in all honesty, we just want to educate our, our customers, because they don't know. You know, we have customer last week, they, the dog got kennel cough, and, you know, they were kind of surprised by it, and I get it, but kennel cough is analogous to your child going to kindergarten and getting the cold, the flu. So, you know, we always encourage, uh, nowadays they have pet insurance, which is smart. Yeah, it's right? really reasonable also. Very, right. very reasonable. Right. So if you do, if dogs do come to Houndstown, or do, any, if children go to, when my grandchildren do jujitsu or soccer, they're always coming banged up. They come home, they got scraped knees, they got kicked in the shin, black and blues. So I think it's smart to shop around to get pet insurance. Yeah. So, uh, and then of course, one of the other big topics I wanted to talk about is, is, is crate training and the importance of putting a, de a denning animal in a safe and secure spot. A denning animal. So this again, birds go to nest, fish go to in water, and dogs by nature's methodology den they go into small confined spaces 
So if you look at the dogs up in Alaska, all those, uh, what do you call those things? You know, sled the mushing dogs, dogs sled yeah. dogs. They literally sleep in the snow. They crawl it, up in a ball. Right, crawl, crawl up in a little ball. And they sleep like babies. They are big, like, they, they're wonderful. So we impose all our stuff. People put boots on their dogs, booties. Dogs need their feet to navigate. They have extremely sensitive feet. That's why they don't like going to the groomer, meaning they don't like their, their, their feet grabbed. Even little babies, I go grab my, you go see a little infant, a two or three month old, grab their foot. The first thing they'll do is pull away. It's a natural instinct to pull away because we use our feet to navigate. So unfortunately, our neocortex, our brain has developed so quickly and dogs have not. Domestic dogs, they, they were domesticated 15,000 years ago, right, producer? Yes. 15,000 years ago, we domesticated dogs that they domesticated us. And they haven't evolved at all since then. What, what difference, are, what difference has, is a dog now uh, than it was 15,000 years ago? They're like exactly the same. How they're treated is different. Uh, so thank you, right. professor. That's why you're the professor. How they're treated. Anthropomorphically. So now we project all of our stuff. We put jackets on them, booties on them, all kinds of crazy things. You know, and I just laugh. If you look at polar bears... You don't feel sorry for them. I guess, you know, on some level we don't understand how polar bears can be swimming in ice water. Or seagulls are out in the freezing, freezing cold winter. But they're and we don't feel bad for them. Well, you don't. I feel bad for the, the seagulls. seagulls. Yeah, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm only kidding. No, you shouldn't feel bad for them because nature put them there. And very frankly, if they want to go down south, they just fly flying their ass down. down south. They must look at us. Birds flying around must look at us like we are the most idiotic people in the world what we do and how we do it it really amazes me i watch birds they have the most amazing thing if you want to enjoy nature just go to some place and sit there and watch seagulls watch birds and then you understand how screwy we are learn from your dogs the dogs will teach you everything no racism no anything right they're just pure they just want to be loved but on the other hand we have to balance our love so most of my clients love their dogs to pretty much to a point where the dogs are really it's detrimental. For detrimental, dogs. thank you. Detrimental to their mental state. Of course, we're all looking for balance. Balance, balance in exercise. You know, but don't make dogs something they're not. Dogs don't want to be in, a, in a, on an airplane. I don't. Who wants to be on an airplane? So why take a dog? I mean, obviously, if it's necessary. But for your own emotional well-being, you're going to take a small little dog and shove them under the front seat, kick them in the thing. Why is an animal advocate? Why am I the only one that gets annoyed with this? You're not. I am? Oh, I'm not the only one? No. no definitely not. <laughs> All right. Well, I wish because I say these things and you would think I'm saying something horrible that I, I'm somehow emotional support dogs and therapy dogs. There's other ways of doing it. You don't need to project your emotions onto a poor little dog who's incapable. These dogs can't be psychiatrists. They can't listen to your nonsensical problems in life. You can't. You love them, they'll love you. Pet them, you feel good. Yeah. Right, Professor? Very simple. All right. So our crazy dog contest, if you have a dog out there and you think he's unmanageable, take a one or two minute video of his bad behavior, whatever it is, walking on a leash, jumping when you come home, whatever the behavior is, take a one or two minute video. And my team of experts here will at some point review these videos and the winner of the craziest dog contest will get a free uh, boot camp valued at two thousand dollars a free boot camp boarding school next week maybe we're going to have Traeger on he's uh, currently in our boot camp and we'll see how he's developed it's dogs hey listen every dog has a different personality and uh, we're going to see we have some ideas about Traeger we're going to bring him on so the world's craziest dog contest we're going to review it Second, there'll be second and third place yeah, contest. Yeah, we'll probably select around September. The winners. Yeah, yeah, end of July, end of, yeah. We'll select the winners and then we'll video their progress. We'll have them on the radio, we'll video their progress and we'll see how things go. So, as long as they're not, the only thing just for the purposes yeah. of our contest, we deal with aggressive dogs all the time, whether they're human aggressive, animal aggressive, whatever their aggression issues are. But for the purposes of our contest, we don't want human aggressive dogs. Or necessarily Overtly dog aggressive. Right, overtly dog aggression, but right, overtly, overtly, meaning they want to kill another animal and there's no holding them back. But we'll tell you, send your video and we can determine whether those things are fixable or not. In this one minute, one or two minute video, we can determine all that. 
So think about the world population. Think of how nature is gone. It's out of balance. We're out of balance. Look at these beautiful dogs. They're in balance. You're listening to the Dish on Dogs live Monday nights at 8 p.m. See you next week. Good night, everybody. Oh, we got to get this stuff out of here. We forgot that. All right, let's get. Wait, you don't want. Uh, Sorry, turn that off. He's yeah. like dead. We got to kind of move out. Grab that. I'll take your dog. Thank you.